Okay, perfect. So welcome everyone once again, and thanks for joining these uh, to the second live session of South City. South City is an European project that, uh, that aims to that aims to create a, an educational project that joins the, the initiatives from activists, from food activists and local administrators. And the, during these two years, the, the organizations, the partners that are working in this project have tried to identify the, the best practices that exist in, in our countries. Uh, Gazap and, and the Italian team from, so the Italian TSA network, the Italian Solidarity Economy and the AFAL have identified the, some interesting experiences in our countries, so in Belgium and in Italy. And we wanted to share with you, and maybe as we are not at the mall, so many people, we can introduce and share a little bit more also our experiences. Alice will, will introduce us to the self-paced course that we have also prepared and that is, uh, that is it will be really useful to, to support also the, this webinar. So Alice, if you want to introduce this, this webinar, please, uh, this course, please. So hi everybody. Um, this, for this course, we try to do not only share the presentation that the people uh, use to show their own work, but to create a, a concrete e-learning platform. You should uh, have get the link when you subscribe to the course. And uh, here it is. I will show you because if you miss it, you should try to take a look. It's much more than just what we speak with the uh, uh, guest in the live session. Uh, for example, we have just an overview of what a CSA is and so the differences in between CSA and LSPA that is like um, local solidarity based partnership in agroecology and um, describe some relationship that come closer in between uh, producer and consumer and similar to the CSA, but not necessarily following the same uh, path. And uh, also in the way that I come back to the home, also we had uh, the main topic of public procurement. So for example, in this, um, uh, module we spoke we tried we spoke about um, how the small farmers can reach the public procurement we try to identify some problems and some solutions so we didn't just analyze what is wrong with our food system but also analyzing who found some um, solutions to overcome the problems and we had some interesting example, for example, some um, uh, interaction in between CSAs and schools in Belgium, but also some trial to have uh, a complete um, zero kilometer uh, with small producer canteen, so uh, school canteens in South of Italy. And even the, um trial to let the people became the producer itself always in south italy La the third module i have to go fast back in the home Oop. the last module is what we we will um, speak more about in this webinar that it's focusing on access to land and uh, food policy, local food policy, city food policy. So we have the um, example of the two guests of today, Cooperativa Coraggio and Terra and View. But also in this case, we try to include even more information. So we have, for example, uh, an Italian CSA that work on public land, get the public land to work on. And, uh, 
I really like the experience in Bruxelles of the CSA that year I don't found. Um, the year I don't find, I'm really lucky with this introduction, <laughs> that it's uh, using uh, the herd not only to produce food, but also to, pro to produce flowers. And it's really uh, something that moved my heart. So I pass you again the, the microphone, how to say. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot, Alice. So what Alice was showing us is this self-paced course that we were preparing together with Gazap for to learn about how to become a good activist uh, to link PSA and, and local administrations. And we have identified all these good practices, but for sure there are more good practices and it would be really interesting uh, to hear about that then and maybe we can have some some exchanges and some experiences that can enrich also these this talk today uh, first of all i would i would like to to give the possibility to talk to cooperativa coraggio for those who doesn't understand um who doesn't understand italian coraggio means courage okay so it means that they have a lot of power and they are really, well, I don't know if they have power, but they are really aiming to, to change lots of things. And today with us are Giacomo and, and Alice and uh, Alessia, sorry. <laughs> Alessia, Alice, sorry. Giacomo and Alessia from, from Rome. And I would like them to introduce the, their, their experience. And we ask them to think about three experiences, to, to, to think about three questions, sorry. The, the starting point of the Cooperativa Coraggio, the, the difficulties and all the success uh, that you have, that you already had. So thanks a lot for joining us, uh, Giacomo and Alessia. And please, you have the, it's your turn. Okay. <laughs> Hello everyone. And thank you for inviting us uh, to this um, table, let's say virtual table. Um, as uh, Anna said, we are um, um, a cooperative and our name means courage, bravery, and stands for, uh, it's an acronym and stands for uh, uh, Roman Cooperative of Young Farmers. Uh, can you see the, the screen? Because we will try to share the presentation. Yeah, we, 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 okay. we could see. We just have the wrong one, but okay, this is the... No, no, I can do it. Can you see it now? No, 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 and this, we are uh, currently on um, 22 hectares of public land in the north part of Rome. Um, but to get to this point, uh, it was a long process that started more than 10 years ago uh, with a group of people and as precisely with a movement. And it was a movement of people with coming from different paths of life and they all had in common this object of making the public lands uh, that have been abandoned for over 50 years accessible again. Um, so uh, in 2011, it started um, 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 a lobby, I would say, activity of uh, activism to try to pressure the institution to make these lands available again. Um, in this movement, there were different groups i would say and uh, some people that are now part of the cooperative were part of this and they kind of focus more on the youth access to land so uh, what was important for them was the uh, making the lands uh, that belong to the state uh, public and accessible for young people that wanted to work and that they had different competences and they wanted to uh, put them into practice 
Um, there's one thing that is, I think it's important as a context to know that uh, Rome has 48% of the surface that is for agricultural use. Um, and there were uh, thousands of hectares of land that were um, belonged to the state that have been abandoned. So it was important to um, uh, share, um, shine a light on this, on this topic. Um, so in 2013, uh, it started the Cooperativa Coraggio, which was a, a not a cooperative, an agricultural cooperative, because they there was no land to to be uh, working, but it was a society, like a simple, um, how do you say, like a simple group, like a simple enterprise, um, and started this uh, advocacy work uh, with some um, objectives and some goals, which were. Uh, what you can see here. So um, everything what revolved around making public lands a new resource for everybody, not just for the people that wanted to access them, but also for the community. And so it was to create a cultural to host projects uh, under the institution control. So uh, as Anna said before, also, I, as I am understanding from this project, it's, it's trying to find a way to connect uh, also with the institution to, this, to talk, to, uh, to have a dialogue. And this is another thing that we try to do from the very beginning and to redistribute re resources. So um, to favor the sustainable development and sustainability in the city. Um, so, here you can see what are we defined our values, and we say we are an experimental social enterprise. And as I said before, we try to create jobs, food, and services that are accessible to the community, and at the same time taking care of the land and the quality of life through agroecological practices on public lands, which is a very ambitious thing, and um, it's it's has its ups and downs, and um. And it's been now eight years that we're here. So after 2013, when we started the advocacy work, um, we managed to inspire the publication of a, of a public call for making the lands accessible again for uh, young people. So there was a, a tender that was published and uh, we participated with a project, which is the Borghetto San Carlo project. That is the place where we stay at the moment, the 22 actors on the northern part of uh, Rome. Um, we won the project and in 2015, we, we managed to get into this place and um, to have it um, uh, given by the institutions where we pay uh, rent every year. And we try to better the place and restoring the fertility of the soil and to create uh, what we call a green square. Um, it's been now, yeah, it's eight years. And uh, when we came here, there was uh, really nothing. Uh, it was a completely neglected space. So we we managed to um, have some um, vegetables and some um, actors of cereals and uh, pulses. And we create some uh, events as well. Um, and we try to have a dialogue with the institutions and try to uh, better the, the neighborhood where we, we are located. And also because it's uh, quite rare to be so close to the city, but so far away. It's, it's, a, it's a, I don't know how to say, it's a specific situation that we live. Um, I would say here we are in the, the fourth largest natural park. Uh, we are also on the Francis Way, which is a pilgrimage uh, that starts in Canterbury and ends here. Um, and we are part of uh, a lot of, of a neighborhood that has lots of uh, houses. Uh, so we are very urban farm. Um, the main activities we do, uh, it's a social agriculture and beekeeping and we have vegetables, we have uh, cereals 
we have classes. Um, we do a lot of trainings, like free trainings for aspiring young farmers that, uh, as we did at the beginning, didn't, didn't really know how to get uh, to the land and didn't really know how to start. And maybe they didn't have the money to do so. So we try to provide a starting point for the people that are interested in this. Um, uh, for this, we are also collaborating with other organizations and other uh, international um, uh, institutions. So we have uh, an orchard with um, ancient variety of fruit trees. Um, we try to uh, keep the biodiversity of the place uh, by planting uh, these kind of trees. And uh, we started recently uh, a project with uh, PIRAB, which is um, an organization that takes care of um, uh, organic and um, biodynamic. biodynamic agriculture. Um, we introduced some uh, chickens and they, um, they, um, they are in the, in the orchard, so they help us managing the, the, um, the soil and uh, also fertilize it. And we are trying to experiment many different things. Um, yeah, that's what, what we said. 150 fruit trees, 20 cereal lines for conservation and uh, experimental cereals. Um, there's one thing that we don't have, that is water. <laughs> So we have to experiment a lot, especially uh, with um, uh, cereals and grains and pulses and uh, all the things that don't require lots of irrigation. And I mean, apart from this moment of historical moment where it's raining a lot uh, and last year, last year was very dry. So we, we're trying to adapt also by selecting seeds that can adapt better to the drought or the dry temperature, but we're still working in, in progress with this. Um, and maybe I will move to the next project. And then um, she was asking us what were the most difficult moments. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I can answer this, but maybe I can translate what, because uh, <laughs> I arrived four years ago, so. He was there from difficile. the beginning. Moment of difficult, mm. Beh, direi mm, tutti. <laughs> no, vede, tutta okay, la fase no. della startup sicuramente proprio perché ci siamo misurati con uh, sia delle difficoltà di natura amministrativa essendo il nostro un progetto pilota e, um, che perché siamo partiti comunque senza un investimento di base, quindi comunque lavorando a titolo gratuito e volontario per i primi quattro anni. Okay. Adesso abbiamo degli stipendi non ancora pieni, però comunque gestibili con i contratti, eccetera. Ok, um, because what uh, this project was, was kind of um, a pioneering experiment. Uh, he, he was saying that maybe the, the most difficult things were to uh, start over without any money. Uh, each one of them put like a thousand euros just to buy a first uh, machine, like a small tractor, and they didn't have any anything else. Um, so for the very first years, four or five years, uh, they didn't, there was no salary, and still the salary is not uh, uh, satisfying, I would say. But um, let's say it, it was it was start to it was hard to start over and start from scratch and not having anything. Um, no one having your back, I would say. So starting from scratch, everything. So that was probably the most difficult thing and having to talk with the institutions as well and having conversation. And But also I would say another thing because I didn't mention, but we are not only have the land, we are also supposed to have a building which we're waiting for about 10 years to be restored. And I think this one also, a very hard moment because it was supposed to be ready and given with the land in 2013 but this building belonged to the former uh, landlord who is um, a builder I don't, know, he, I don't know how to say in english but he he builds buildings <laughs> uh, 
And so uh, he, uh, in exchange of the lands here, where he couldn't build anything, he got some lands in the city and he built what he wanted to build, but he didn't respect the agreement. So there there's this building, like a farmhouse, uh, that was supposed to be integrating the contract that has been abandoned for over 10 years. So I would say one of the main jobs that we had here was to lobby the institution for uh, like making sure that this building was uh, restored properly and given back to the community because it's a public building and uh, it's we manage it part partially, but it's a public building. And so I think this also was a very hard thing. Uh, we only managed la two years ago to convince them to start uh, the works and they're still not done. Um, maybe we will get inside in September uh, to start this, uh, what we see, uh, we call the Land University, um, where we could, would like to integrate what we do already. So the um, create a, a mill, a pasta factory and some laboratories connected to it. The hospitality for tourism, alternative tourism, uh, um, keep doing uh, agroecology training, um, maybe Erasmus Plus projects like this, conferences. So if we manage to get in September, this is what is going to happen. This is what I said before, and maybe you were asking also the successes, right? So what were the main successes? Beh, sicuramente l'aver fatto affidare centinaia di ettari di terre pubbliche e essere inseriti in Sibater, che è un progetto che prevede l'affidamento delle terre pubbliche in 900 comuni del, del centro-sud di cui siamo partner e consulenti, e il fatto che stanno per uscire altri bandi sulle terre pubbliche, ma anche il fatto di aver tenuto in piedi l'attività la, portando dentro questo terreno abbandonato biodiversità, produzione, attività socioculturali e il fatto che comunque la compagine la, la lavorativa si è, si, si è ampliata, gli stipendi sono cresciuti e stiamo a un passo da, da, dall'aver vinto anche quest'altra battaglia con il costruttore. Ok, so probably the main successes are, uh, first of all, um, we managed to make accessible over 300 hectares of public land, not only this, but with the advocacy work, uh, we managed to create like um, awareness on this topic and the 300 hectares of land were given to people um, in 2015. But also we kind of stimulated and inspired the new uh, public call that is going to happen in, in a few months, I think um as a as an example as a model for the good good things but also for all the difficulties we hope that this was a, a useful way for for the institutions to try to make something easier for the people that are coming after us and also the fact that we are inserted in the this inter uh, national national problem program program that is called Sibater and it's uh, with 900, uh, 900 uh, municipalities and it's about public land and uh, making them accessible again and the fact that we are starting to have some uh, salaries and we are uh, every year a little bit more and we are very close to get into these buildings that were abandoned until three years ago. And uh, we managed to bring some biodiversity in this place that was completely degraded e anche l'approvazione direi della delibera sulla food policy. E non so many things. No, but it's not this easy. I'm just went I just I just want to say this. It's not it's not so successful. No, I mean it is, but it's very hard. Um so the fact that we are part of this group that is uh, the Roman food policy and uh, together with other associations and uh, other realities of the city, we managed to create this, I think it's, it's can we say law for the Libera, um, uh, to create a, a food policy in the city of Rome. Uh, so it, it will be uh, concerning the whole process of food from the production to the distribution. And this, this is a good uh, success for Sì, Sì, è partito da poco il Food Council, um... 
per gestire il regolamento sulla politica del cibo a Roma e, e regolare tutta la filiera. Ok, saying that um, it's just started the Food Council for um, creating some law for regulating the, the food policy in Rome. And I don't know if it was the last question or there were two questions. No, it was this one. Okay. Um, so, so sorry, I was looking for the microphone that I couldn't find. No, the questions were, were those ones, no, the, your experience. And maybe as we still have few, really few minutes, maybe it would be interesting how has been, if you can go a little bit deep on, on your experience with the, with the food policy of Rome or the, the connections, maybe it's another question, with the local administration, no, how has been, if you have had to, to put too much energy, as the focus is also these connections between you and the local administrations, if you can go explain just two or three words, no? So like a sort of advice to other people to, to, to keep encouraged with this work. You'll be done. Non meno. A pezzi. Se hai qualche consiglio magari su, eh, cioè approfondire un po' la questione del rapporto con le politiche sociali, anche, eh, politiche locali, anche Beh, se qualche consiglio. Mh, sì, serve tanta pazienza, nel senso che bisogna fare proprio un lavoro antropologico di traduzione di alcuni contenuti e come fossero diverse comunità linguistiche, no? quella, della, quella degli agricoltori, quella dei cittadini, quella dell'amministrazione e riuscire a far passare un contenuto attraverso tutte queste comunità linguistiche è sicuramente molto difficile bisogna creare poi un, un dialogo dove ci siano degli elementi win-win un po' per tutti nel senso, per esempio la pratica sulla terra pubblica è andata avanti perché alle amministrazioni abbiamo proposto di affidarle con dei contratti di affitto togliendogli la manutenzione di queste aree i cittadini eh, erano contenti perché si creavano dei parchi agricoli gli agricoltori pure perché generavano posti di lavoro quindi riuscire a tradurre un po' a tutte le varie comunità linguistiche quello che poi si porta avanti e per quello serve pazienza nel senso che chiaramente sono per percorsi lunghi perché serve appunto che tutti poi alla fine creano un minimo comune denominatore. So he would say um, that because uh, we, we work with the local authorities and uh, it could be uh, the, the main requirement is the patients uh, he says it's like uh, speaking different languages so you kind of have to find uh, a balance and a way to communicate with all of them with the administrations with the citizens with the farmers so um the patience is required and he said for example the the um, theme of and the question of the public lands was a win-win situation when they proposed it to the public authorities because Uh, this meant that the public authorities didn't have to do maintenance for their areas and in exchange the farmers could create some um, jobs for themselves and for other people. So it's... Um, e the hanno dei parchi and the citizens, they, they could have access to green spaces uh, that, that were maintained by the farmers and they were still public. I don't know if we answered. Yes, thanks a lot for, for, your, for your comment. It has been really, really interesting. And I don't know if any one of the others would like to, to have... We still have two minutes for any questions or if you want to go a little bit deep on, on something that you are curious or you want to learn more about them. They are really nice example in Italy. Francesca, I think she is. Yeah, Francesca. <laughs> yeah, I, I have, it's super interesting um, because you did it all alone. I have the feeling that you did it all alone. And I have a question about the uh, degree of, um, uh, how can I say, how much the municipality has to, to say to your project. I mean, they don't have, um, you choose for yourself what you do. They, they don't have to choose for you or to give you some uh, 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 limit, limits or uh, restrictions. Lo dico in italiano? Se vuoi, sì. Poi lo traduciamo. Sì, esatto, pure lo traduciamo noi. Sì. Uh, mi chiedevo come se la, il comune o la regione visto che vi dà uh, il, il te la terra insomma ha una parola da dire insomma ha 
vi impone delle cose, uh, dei limiti o potete scegliere uh, come gestire il vostro, la vostra terra, i vostri progetti come volete voi. What's the deal? Allora, eh, noi chiaramente abbiamo presentato un progetto nel 2015 e a quello dobbiamo attenerci. Chiaramente ne, nei limiti di alcune variazioni normali che si incontrano in corso d'opera. E per quel bando, per, per vincere il bando, avevamo appunto, come dire, eh, sì, stabilito un atto d'obbligo vero e proprio in, in fase notarile e mh, ci dobbiamo attenere appunto ad alcune cose, per esempio la certificazione sul biologico, e, mh, però di fatto, ecco, come dire, siamo noi che siamo molto scrupolosi nel mantenerci coerenti con, eh, con il piano originario. Di fatto l'amministrazione vorremmo che controllasse anche di più mm, ma in linea di massima fino a che trova l'affitto pagato è difficile che si creino dei problemi con gli affidatari quindi in altri casi di affidamenti di interre pubbliche sono state affidate soprattutto da Arsial e poi in realtà non c'è stato alcun tipo di controllo dei progetti che si sono sviluppati anzi so, um, he said that um, there are some obligations that have been put into the contract for example like we we have to be um we have to have the certification of organic uh, food um but as long as uh, we respect the you know the payment of the rent there are not much uh, con controls on what we do uh, but we we are interested in <laughs> having uh, the institutions to pay attention for what we do um, because it, it happened in other situations, uh, the similar situations that they, they, they gave the land and they just didn't control anything or they didn't just uh, pay any attention to what was done on the land, on the public land. So we try to be as respectful as we can of the obligation and the contract and but we also would like them to to pay more attention to what we do okay yeah. i don't know if okay. i think it's a see antoine yes. yeah can i ask a question thank sure. you for the, the presentation is very interesting um i was and thank you for the translation uh i was wondering i really like the fact that you don't stop when you have your land you continue the advocacy to help other people to 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 find land that's very good that's a really a, a bottom-up approach uh, where you, you we see the, the solidarity um has it uh do you feel like um, many young other farmers will be get will get some land will benefit from that from your experience um oh, And I also like the fact that you want to keep in touch with the public owner. It's not like, thank you for the land, we will do our business. Because uh, doing that is actually um, doing advocacy, showing that it's working, showing uh, all the multifunctionality of the agriculture system that you do, will push them to do the same with other people. Uh, so I was wondering, do you feel positive about uh, your project giving birth to other projects in the, in the area? Cercavo la slide quella su Cortivo al tuo futuro proprio perché dove era? Just a moment. Ecco qua. E, sì, nel senso che appunto sicuramente non ci siamo fermati anche perché volevamo garantire, partendo da, dall'inizio, delle condizioni migliori ai prossimi affidatari delle terre pubbliche. Quindi ci, ci interessa continuare su questa strada e che i prossimi abbiano delle condizioni migliori. Quindi Aspetta. un accesso al credito, un accesso alla formazione, oltre che accesso alle terre. Okay, so uh, he said, yes, we are, we, we are positive about this because the, one of the first reasons why we started was to make um, these lands accessible for the people that are coming next to us and um, next uh, after. Um, uh, so we focused, especially now for the new uh, calls on the access to credit, Uh, uh, um, um, trainings for, for people so um, yeah it's a focus that we try to have and it's one of the reasons also why we started to make this actually public and, and available for the community e, e poi sì abbiamo visto crescere interesse piano piano tant'è vero che poi i corsi che abbiamo fatto 
ehm, tendono a essere sempre più frequentati e poi molti continuano a chiederci interessati quando usciranno i prossimi bandi su, su Roma, ma in generale il tema è vivo un po' dappertutto, tant'è vero che così Bader ci chiamano spesso nel comune XY a raccontare questa cosa e gli stessi comuni, a parte i giovani agricoltori, gli stessi comuni sono interessati a questo tipo di processi e chiedono delle consulenze specifiche. Um, and yeah, so we also saw uh, raising interest on, uh, on the topic of access to public land. Um, and so we, we saw that the, the courses that we do, like this ones you can see, Cultival to Futuro, uh, they have um, every year more participants and the, the people are still asking us when, when are they coming out, uh, when are they going to publish the new calls, when is it going to happen? And also the municipalities that know about this, uh, they, they ask, um, how, how can we do this here? Or uh, can you come and talk about this here? Maybe there are small municipalities, uh, not as big as Rome, but we can say there is, there is an increasing interest over the past years. Sì, e poi c'è stata anche attenzione a livello... Oh no, no, scusa, questo qui è un'altra cosa. Ok. okay. No. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Giacomo Alessia. I need to talk to you because we have the other, other experiences to listen. And I will pass the floor to Francesca. Okay, if you can stop sharing. Okay, thanks. I pass the floor to Francesca who will, um, who will introduce the, the next speaker. Thanks a lot. And your turn. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for the great presentation. The next one will be uh, very close to what you do, but in a Belgium uh, um, country. Uh, we, as a Réseau des Gazap, we work close in contact with uh, Terre en Vue because we, we have many uh, producers that are looking for lands and they are, have been supported by Terre en Vue. And so I do a small, short presentation, then I will leave the microphone to Antoine, which is uh, right. On my side, you cannot uh, see, but we have just a wall uh, between us. And so um, Terre en Vue, it's a Belgian structure uh, whose general objective is to find land and make it available to farmer under agroecological conditions. To achieve this, one of the approaches of the uh, cooperative is to target public land, so municipalities, regions, etc. And uh, Terre en Vue have developed a whole methodolog methodology uh, and produced a manual of good, good practices to help uh, politicians to, who, which, who want to participate in this process. And uh, moreover, thanks to their enormous work that they have done these 10 years, uh, maybe a little, a little bit less, they are now quite, quite well recognized uh, in Belgium and also abroad. And uh, for example, they are included in the jury for the allocation of public land in some municipalities. So I just put the link of the manual here in the chat and then leave the, the microphone to Antoine, who is the co-coordinator of uh, Terre en Vue. Uh, we have a problem. Antoine has disappeared. <laughs> it's not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I see him to come. I'm really sorry. <laughs> it's quite funny, no? <laughs> Wait, sorry. <laughs> Fortunately, we are really few people. <laughs> Yet to restart the computer for. for... Okay, maybe. <laughs> Wait a second. Sure. Maybe while we wait for Antoine, it would be cool if we can hear or if, if the, you know, the other people can write in the chat where are you listening to us from, where are you following this, this session, so we can at least listen, so at least read and then listen to you, where are you what are your experiences, if you want to, to write in the chat, where, where are you, okay? Welcome back, sorry, I... Where is he? I cannot see him. Okay, so... Welcome, welcome, Antoine. <laughs> sorry, I had to reboot the computer. Everything just stopped. So I'm very sorry. I will just share my presentation and hopefully everything is going to be all right. 
Do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so hello everybody. My name is uh, Antoine. I work for uh, Terre en Vue. And uh, Francesca has uh, asked me to, to talk a little bit about the work of Terre en Vue, especially with local authorities. Just to give you a little bit of context, uh, in Belgium, uh, farmland is not protected. So there is no legislation that says um, on a farmland you have to farm, you have to feed the people, you have to produce um, something that is eatable. <laughs> And therefore, we find a lot of different things in our farmlands. We find Christmas trees growing, we find solar panels, lots of horses, and so on. Um, but fewer and fewer um, food production, actually. Second uh, point, the farmland market is not regulated, meaning that the price of the ground uh, is, of the farmland is increasing like crazy. We have no such things like um, abandoned land. Huh? You, we talked about abandoned land near Rome in Belgium that doesn't exist. Every inch of land uh, is cultivated. Uh, there is an owner, there is a, an, a farmer on it, and there is a very fierce um, concurrence, huh? a very fierce uh, you, you, uh, competition between them. Uh, and therefore, the, the price of farmland has um, tripled over the last 10 years. And just to give you an example, we now pay uh, one hectare of land over 30,000 um, euros. And it goes up to 100,000 euros in some areas. Um, third point, small farms disappear. Uh, we are losing 43 farms every week on average in Belgium since 1990. So it's 43, you, you read it correctly, it's a lot. Um, and it is the small farms, um, uh, smaller than 50 hectares that disappear, while the bigger ones uh, are, 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 are doing fine. And they're even increasing in numbers and uh, in surface. Uh, fourth point, farmland property is ever more concentrated. We have uh, very, we have new, a new kind of actors like um, investment companies that come in Belgium and they're from Belgium as well, and they buy land. We have, uh, for example, a company that is uh, producing swimming pools. Okay, good for you. Now, with their benefits, they are buying land just because it's a good investment. We don't want that anymore. <laughs> Uh, missions of Terre en Vue, uh, we have three missions. We are there to preserve farmland from speculation and protect their nourishing function, the, you, you, you understand. Facilitate access to land for agroecological farmers and create bounds between farmers and consumers. This is actually the, the most important things for Terre en Vue. Uh, the, the, idea, the whole idea, the whole point is that people from the cities, from the rural areas and the farmers get in touch and get to know each other and, and have places where they meet. Five key activities, uh, we, we buy the land, uh, the private land, we, we, we can buy it and we buy it with uh, citizens' uh, money, we buy it all together, we make it a common good. I will not focus on that in this presentation, but if you have questions about the model, we can develop that. We also manage the land of other private people, so for example, uh, a private owner can, can put the, the land at disposal of Terre en Vue uh, for 20 years, let's say, and we will manage uh, what will happen on the field. So we will find a farmer to, to, to farm the land uh, and make sure that the relation is, is, uh, is healthy. We also work on the transmission. We have a lot of old farmers. Uh, we have way, way, way too few young farmers. So we are going to, to, to lose a lot of farms in the coming years. Uh, and we, we need to help uh, the old farmers uh, to transmit their activity, their, their property, their know-how to the young farmers. Public land, I will, I will say a lot about that in a few minutes, so I'll skip it. Uh, we, of course, do a lot of sensibilization, sensibilization and citizen actions. Um, so we organize a lot of uh, things with, with, with people uh, in the farms. Uh, we do advocacy because we, we know that our action will, will always be just a drop in the ocean. Uh, and at some point, our, our experiments needs to, to lead to, to a, a greater 
a change. So advocacy is getting more and more pregnant, um, pregnant, no, it's more and more important. My wife is pregnant, more and more <laughs> pregnant. Uh, and then we work also on innovation and development, of course. Uh, public land. So what is public land? Uh, it is mostly municipalities, public social assistance centers and churches that own the, the public land in Belgium. It's around 8% of all the land, the farmland uh, in Belgium. So it's a lot of land, it's 50,000 hectares uh, in, Wallonia, uh, in Wallonia that are owned publicly. Why should we care about public land? Because it is our patrimonium. It's a leverage for action towards transition. It's just, it has to be managed in a way we feel it's a good way because it is our land as well. Uh, and managing public lands is actually an abundant function. No one cares about farmland in the, in the communities, um, in the municipalities, sorry, in the cities. Um, no one cared. I should, I should uh, say that in the past because there is a regain of interest by public actors now. And so a lot of public actors come to us. What can we do? We have seen uh, something in Italia, uh, Cooperative Coraggio. We want to do the same here. How can we do that? Um, and so we, we are really uh, contacted by a lot of public authorities today who want to, to develop um, the, the, this kind of projects on their land. But most of the time, there is no one in, the, in those public authorities that has been working on knowing what are the, what are the, properties, the properties, which farmer is using the land, uh, when did the contract start and when, did the, when will the contract stop. So it's like a no man's land where farmers do what they need to do, what they do, and the public owner just doesn't care about it. It's not, it's not his, his competency, it's not his, his field, actually. Um, so there is a, a lot of work to do uh, for, for local uh, authorities to regain uh, legitimacy uh, and, and also know-how about uh, managing public farmland. And you, you said it, uh, it requires a, a lot of patience. Uh, so every meeting we have with this kind of guys, uh, those are uh, elected people. Huh? Every investment is, is for the very, very long run. Um, for example, we, we have had contact with one municipality in Brussels in 2018. They said, we have a, a farmland, we want you to, to take care of it. It took five years before we could sign uh, the deal. And it's always like that, but it's worth, it's worth it. <laughs> um, we are counseling individually over 70 public institutions with dialogue, sorry for the miss, with dialogue and we influence higher level institutions such as the administration of the regional, the regional administrations and we develop an advocacy, of course. Um, so when we meet a public authority for the first time, we always try to assess where they are in their maturity, the level of maturity. Uh, did they characterize their need uh, and their objective? They need to have a public policy for their farmland. And most of the time, they just they don't know what to do with farmland. It's, it's for farming. Yeah, but do you want to foster young farmers? Do you want to help uh, young uh, farmers? Do you want to help the old ones? Um, do you want uh, local food systems? Uh, there is, do you see the link between farm and food? Secondly, um, they need an up-to-date uh, register of their lands and the monitoring of the farmer using the land. So most of the time that they don't really know, just like I said, uh, what are their proper properties this most of the time they do know the, what are the properties but 99 percent of the time they don't know who for sure is uh, using the land if there is a uh, land that is free that is available they need procedures they need uh, guidelines to put it at disposal back to farmers uh, and they, most of the time they just don't know how to do that also and there is a, um, a legal aspect of also they, they are very, very um, afraid of legal um, uh, problems. So they, they're not so innovative, they're not so creative. They do as they always, as 
they always have done uh, and we have to push them and we also have to come with uh, lawyers and do some study to to be certain to 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 bring them some uh, security about the processes that we propose that they, they put uh, in action and then they need to sustain that policy in the long run they need staffing they need uh, procedures I'm switching to two examples. One is in Charleroi, which is a big city in the south of uh, Belgium, 200,000 inhabitants, 100 a square a kilometer square. Uh, it's a city with a big, big, big past uh, industrial uh, history, so lots of uh, pollution uh, problems. 14% um, of the territory is owned by public actors. So the, it, it's definitely uh, a leverage to, to do something on those 14%. Uh, voilà. uh, Charleroi, the, the city, doesn't know what to do. When we first met them, they didn't know what to do on those lands. Oh, maybe we can put uh, solar panels. Maybe we can build things. Maybe we need recreation area. Oh, we could produce uh, biomass. Uh, why not food? <laughs> Bio biodiversity hotspot, why not? So there was no clear view on that. So we made, uh, we helped them uh, make a decision tree. Uh, public land, is there pollution? That is the first entry in Charleroi because most of the lands are polluted and deeply polluted. If there is no pollution, um, we can uh, check whether the, the area is big enough to host a food production um, farm, a farm actually. So this is a very simple and just one, one part of the, a bigger uh, tree but it shows how uh, politicians can actually uh, put on paper uh, a decision process that will stay even after they're, they're, they're not elected anymore a few years later. So this is uh, an example. Then we have been um, mandated to go and visit all the lands of Charleroi. We've checked them and um, we have uh, analyzed every different land to, to check whether it was okay to put at disposal of a farmer or not. Uh, sometimes there is already a farmer and for us it's not a question to, to, um, to put the farmer away, uh, certainly not, so we, we won't do that. Um, so okay, I, I, I will not go further in, in that detail. The process is still ongoing. Um, now we are waiting for some budget because we, we have we have done all that freely uh, to go to go further and really put the the, the, the the fields at disposal. We are waiting from the municipality to to give a little bit of budget. This is also important because th this shows um, a politic um, a real politic will. Uh, to go further. If there is no money, sometimes also you better stop. Otherwise, you will work like crazy, and in the end, there will not there will not be a decision, and they won't sign the final documents, and they will put the solar panels in the end. So, uh, it's also always an equilibrium. Um, wait and see. Uh, now we are in a wait and see situation with Charleroi. It's a, in the long term. My second example is uh, more on the legal uh, area. Um, we have uh, developed a procedure for selling uh, lands at a fixed price between local authorities. Following um, the COVID, the drought, uh, the, um, the floods uh, of the, the, the past years, a lot of local authorities need to sell the land to finance their policies. It's very sad that a, a public owner has to sell its land. So we've come up with a procedure that helped them uh, sell it between them, because there is always another public actor with a lot of money that is ready to buy that land. Um, and um, we wanted that uh, sell to happen without a speculation. So um, we, we have developed that procedure where uh, the public owner that needs to sell land for money will sell it at a fixed price. So it won't be an auction where everybody is uh, auctioning above the other, pushing the prices up. No, we, we fix the price. There is a one market price. There is no two market price. There is one market price. And this will be the price. 
And then um, we have uh, different criteria that will help distinguish uh, who will uh, get the deal. So I won't go in the, in the details, but we have uh, worked with the uh, lawyers, with different lawyers uh, to, um, to build that procedure and it has been legally validated and uh, the, the, the municipality of Liège will be the first one to use it probably in the coming months. Um, okay, I don't want to go into the too much details. So um, if you have questions on, on that, I, I can give you the details. Uh, and just, I think it's my last slide as a result. I put, I put them in between breaks because the results are, there are many more results in the, in the long run. <laughs> it's a lot of investment. But nowadays we have uh, received 15 hectares in management uh, from five different municipalities. And we've been able to install uh, six projects on those lands. So three of them are in Brussels, Anderlecht, Jet, and Gansoren. And uh, two of them are in Wallonia. Um, and we just received seven hectares from uh, Gré d'Oiseau, which is another municipality from Wallonia. And we will now uh, launch and, and call for projects to, to install um, farmers on, the, on, the, on those seven hectares. So it's very, very promising. Um, voilà, and the last line is also interesting. Uh, thanks to our work, there is one municipality that has launched a job offer to, to hire someone to go and meet all the farmers of, its, of the municipality uh, and, and make sure who is who, what is your contract on that land, um, when did that contract start, when will it end, and it's, it, it's a field work to get to know the farms, get to know their issue in terms of access to land, and also in the end, uh, be fair. And when the farmer is 65 and, and he's, he's uh, retired, he gets money from the state because he, he has retired, he also has to leave uh, the fields and, and give place uh, to the new farmers, to the young farmers. Yeah, um, just our perspectives. Uh, we want public uh, local authorities to develop a vision of public farmland as a common good. We want them to develop a dynamic land register for all farmland. And we want them to stop selling public farmland um, in, in the, 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 the conditions of today. We, we, it's okay if it's, if it's between, local, between public authorities, why not? but stop selling public farmland to the private uh, sector. And I'm done. Thank you, Antoine. <laughs> uh, you can uh, turn off the sharing. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, so there is, I see Giacomo and Alessia that have a question. There are several questions also in the chat, but I guess that they are most focused on the- I on don't- the, on, on, I the, on the, on the agronomic part. I don't understand this question actually. They were linked to the part to a question. Maybe we can pass the floor to, to Giacomo and then ask to Ikiko Mori to, to repeat the question because I think you wrote the question in a certain specific moment linked to an any slide. So yeah. now we cannot link the question to the, the argument. So please first Giacomo and then Ikoko. Okay. So Giacomo, thanks. Ah, yes, you are our cousin of, uh, of Belgium. <laughs> mm. Great to know you. Um, good project, very good project. Um, and so um, uh, the municipality now uh, sell the, um, the public lands. Yeah. Yes. Uh, this is one of uh, the first um, our struggle in, in Rome because in uh, 2012, 2012, 2012, um, the um, one of the aim of the of our municipality is to sell public lands, mm -hmm. and so we um, we convince them to to not selling lands because we um, we suggest that with um, that with a rent uh, is um, is a long term investment, mm -hmm. not a short term investment, and um, le amministrazioni se perdono terre pubbliche diminuiscono pure la loro credibilità bancaria nel senso che perdono immobili 
<laughs> um, I understand so. what you say. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, you have yeah. to keep you have to keep the property. The property has a lot of value, and giving yes. it away the financial is what, value as the well. One shot, and then what? It's it's very a short term vision. Um, yes, do that. It's not responsible. And and also the municipality can maintain the um, control about the, the project that um, yes. that develop in this um, public land, especially if is. Um, uh, incorniciate in una politica del cibo is um, they're included in a food policy mm -hmm. um, for that for yeah. the city you you, we, you you lose control yeah we can uh, send you um, our um, re re regolamento mm, agreement no uh, art no, no our um, agreement or the law the yeah. do document about the food policy in Rome that uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have in Italy, we have, we have in Italian, but uh, you can translate with. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean your the your your arguments uh, towards Rome to say do not sell. No, no. Um, the... the law that uh, the describe uh, our um, uh, our statement in a food policy system. Mm, okay. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. The official document. The official document, yes, that mm. um, che regolamenta, che, che, mm. che... The rules, the um, regulates the, um, the mm. food policy. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. Yeah, very interesting. What I, I feel sometimes is that we, we do all that work with local authorities, then in the end we do a call for project, we install someone, and that someone is all grateful, but is going to do its, its own things, and we don't have that... Uh, I feel, huh? but we, we don't have that. We, we could be much more stronger. We could be stronger in terms of um, farmers also uh, going in the streets or, go, or sending uh, letters to the politics in terms of uh, we want everybody to, to be able to get that, actually. Um, so what I see from your project and what I really like in your project is the idea that uh, you we, we have to... Um, to put all those 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 farmers that benefit uh, from public lands should should yeah should want that for everybody actually uh, and should and really need to um, to push to push public uh, public authorities to be exemplary with hundred percent of their public farmland. That's what I mean. And farmers have a role. It's not just 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 the people, farmers have a main role, should play a main role in that. Okay, so thanks Giacomo and Alessia for this. And I would like to invite once again, Ikiko Mori, if you want to repeat the question that is in the chat, so, because we don't manage to understand, to put the link between your comment regarding the, the growing the rooftops and the random growing, so if you want to help us to, to understand the question, but maybe it's easier if you connect your microphone and ask it instead of writing, if it is possible for you. If you are listening to me, Ikiko. I don't know if it is Ikiko your name. Your mic is uh, off. Yeah. From Ikiko, I, I see you, Ikiko, but I'm not sure if you are getting the point. Hello. Hello, Ikiko. Ah, okay. <laughs> Excuse me. So, would you mind to repeat to us the, the question? Because we don't manage to understand your question and the slide that you maybe you were interested in. Uh, questions. Uh... No, I have no question because I was just listening. So who who wrote the question then? Uh, that more... there were any questions that was uh, that was a su su suggestion. Ah, okay. And and would you like to explain it a little bit more so maybe Antoine can understand the, the comment? Uh, because um, uh, I know that um, the the land is. Land is dying when you you grow 
too much, too often the same thing in the same land, you 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 make uh, disappear every the same uh, nutrients, the same uh, food for for food for nature the for plants the food for plants in in uh, in the ground if you grow the same thing every season every year in the same land the the land dies okay and this so is... to, to keep the land uh, uh, in good health you need to to switch uh, mm -hmm. the 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 seeds every season, like uh, if if you grow um, in the summer, if you go grow like uh, mm -hmm. wheat, then you will grow like potatoes in the winter. But this uh, is what random, you... uh, random, uh, yeah, random is... seed for trees is, is a good idea because uh, to have uh, a lot different trees in the same area makes the land. Uh, uh, make, keep the land in good health because uh, the 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 nutrient uh, for that the land absorbs when uh, fruits uh, Sorry, I, fall I down stop. on the ground. I stop you because Antoine, I know that there's an answer for this. Yeah, yeah. I, it's not exactly the, the topic now, but I, I can I can say some things because this is exactly what we see when you have very big companies that depend on um, financial capitals, if potato is um, the good crop every year because the, the financial markets say that the potato is uh, the good crop for this year, it will, uh, you will have a good return on investment, they will put potatoes five years in a row on the farmland uh, and they will destroy the land just like you said. This is because the, these, these kinds of companies are not responding to logical agroeconomic uh, agronomic uh, principles. Uh, they just respond to capitalistic um, logic. This is why we should not sell public land. We should keep public lands public and make sure that there are some uh, environmental uh, or, or soil protecting rules yeah and uh and uh, 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 uh i think uh, like a, a field of uh, of uh, apple trees is not a good idea you need uh, like uh, 10 or 20 different uh, fruit trees in the same area to diversify the 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 bio the bio the biological matters that falls in the ground yeah okay and as you uh, i think that you can take the okay uh, thanks ikiko for for all your comments um it has been pretty interesting also to hear these other experiences and focus of the of the of this evening today and uh, now I should pass the floor to our last experience in Italy. But <laughs> you have to reboot the computer, Antoine, and <laughs> he has disappeared also. And I'm trying to <laughs> today is something there are lots of things that are happening right now, and I don't know what is happening. I'm trying to contact him so. Please give me just one second and maybe if other people can maybe introduce yourself because he, he's a farmer and maybe he just... I'm not a farmer. <laughs> Are you here? I, I'm not a farmer. Uh, I'm just uh, very, very concerned about yeah. uh, oh. uh, climate change, about, uh, uh, about forests that are burning nowadays and... Uh, I think it's time uh, for us to to do to do something uh, really matters, really that that really matters. Yeah, the, the farmer is the other, the last participant that has disappeared. You know, <laughs> and I'm trying to contact him. Uh, just give me one second. I was inviting the other participants if they want to introduce in the chat or maybe ask their small experiences or big experiences so we can 
learn a little bit more about about you since I tried to to solve this thing because it was totally unexpected. Okay, sorry for this. So uh, Francesca, if you help me, please managing this. <laughs> uh, I uh, I see that there is Otter Confini Distretto di Economia Solidale, and I was wondering if if they have something to add to what is, has been said until now about the experience uh, of your structure. Me? No, Oltre Confini. <laughs> oh, the, that's the, the Economy uh -huh. Solidarity District is the next interviewer that we are mm. missing. Yes, okay. I'm Dominic. Mm. Ciao, nice to meet you, I'm Dominic. Ah. He's there. I'm Des Oltre Confini. Non ti vediamo. See, because uh, I have, uh, I need the five minutes because I'm in movement for CSA and uh, I wait uh, 25 minutes, but now I have to change my, to change my van. And so I need five minutes. Okay. Uh, Thank you very much. Minutes. <laughs> I, actually, for me, we could already do a sort of um, uh, resume of what has been said until now, because I found something really interesting between the intervention of uh, Antoine and of uh, Giacomo and Alessia, uh, which was the um, difficult, even if uh, the context is very different, uh, the, the thing that is in common is that it's very difficult to, to talk and be understandable with the current. So municipalities, citizens, uh, other association, uh, lawyers, and be because everyone has his own language, uh, also codes of communication and uh, very different timing uh, for dec decision making, for um, Ali, uh, engagement, engagement, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was yeah very very interesting. And it's a very hard thing to do when you want to start a project mm -hmm. that includes a lot of complicated things uh, like uh, legal legal uh, uh, things. Then also it wants to be very differentiated and also touch a very very different publics. Uh, so, yeah. chapeau <laughs> to all of you. And maybe to, we to... need anthropologists <laughs> mm -hmm. to go this this work of um, of uh, translate um, and also lawyer, um, architects, um, mm -hmm. urbanist, urbanisti. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also about the the private property, yeah? because. Um, the private property, in the end, it should not matter who is pro the owner of one, a land. It should not matter. What should matter is uh, that there, there should be a set of rules that gives uh, power to the farmer on the land, no matter who is the owner. Um, and sometimes when you talk to private owners, they are never willing to give long-term contracts to farmers and so on because they want to keep in control. Just in case it would go wrong, they want to keep the control. It's exactly the same for public uh, owners. Very often they say, oh, well, 15 years, that's, that's very long. Uh, you, you want 30 years, that's too long. I, I, I want to keep, keep the control. Um, but this is a sickness of uh, the, the private property, actually. Uh, at some point, you have to, to accept that farmland is for farming, and you have to accept uh, that uh, some of your power as a private owner is given away to uh, the farmer that needs a long-term contract, that needs a long-term vision in order to, to do the, invest the necessary investments, do the necessary planning, and put its energy um, even for the next generation. And um, it's very sad to see today that the, the, the neoliberalism is, is pushing more and more towards more control uh, and not towards more um, 
confidence. confidence. La confiance. Yeah. Um, yeah, confidence. We have um, two important laws in Italy. Uh, one is the 440 of uh, 1978, an old law mm -hmm. um, that um, that tells that um, che, um, se le terre non sono lavorate possono essere espropriate. And that said that if the lands are not used, they mm. can be taken away. They can be taken away um, dall'amministrazione, by, by, by the, the, municipality. the municipality. Okay. But uh, this law is a very important, but not applicated yet. Mm. <laughs> Even often it is not applicable. And we have um, another law that, um, um, that controls the agrarian pact. The, um, the affitti, uh, the rents, the rents, oh, yeah, and yeah. Um, impone che il contratto agricolo sia di 30 anni. Poi può essere fatto in deroga da 15 o al minimo 7, però la regola sui patti agricoli è che deve essere di 30 anni. So the law says that the, to rent the public land, uh, the, the time is the, the timing is 30 years by law. Okay, and but you can question. change it to, to 15 or 7, Al but the, you know, the, the law is 30 years. Okay, that's very good. And uh, are they forced to use that contract or they can say, no, it's free, it's gratis, it's zero euro for you, but I keep... Okay, we, we use the, this kind of contract, um, an agrarian pact for uh, 15 plus okay. 15 years, 15 okay. plus 15. Uh, and we pay a rent uh, to the municipality of Rome. Yeah. How much is it per hectare? Uh, about 300 euro for hectare. Per year. Also, the, the price in, um, in Rome um, for buy or sell, uh, the, the medium price uh, is, uh, is over 15,000 uh, 15, euro. 15,000, yeah, okay. 50,000 or 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 
the organic farm Rio Selva, it's also a co-housing, that it's something really important in their own structure. And they cooperate really a lot with the public authorities because they started, this, the farm itself was started from who was um, the major of the small town where they live, Preganziol. And after he left uh, the, um, the farm and uh, the public authorities, he, he continued to help the guys uh, to evolve into their project. And mainly they uh, grew, um, born, they was born, building uh, up a solidarity purchase group. The municipality already was trying to do it by themselves, but it, it did not work. And they always say, the guys from uh, Biofattoria Reserva, they always say that these things was making them laugh because it was not something that the municipality should do. And in fact, when when started bottom up, um, was enough uh, one order of oranges to start the gas, uh, and then they decided to convert the farm into a CSA. Uh, this happened because um, first things they proposed a tour of uh, the, the first uh, Italian CSA to explain how it was working their structure. And this convinced um, the, the people around them that was also possible to build it in, uh, in uh, Veneto, in the north of Italy, where they work in between uh, Venice and other two small towns, smaller towns. And even the Councilor for Environment became a member of the CSA. And they kept this um, uh, way to involve uh, always uh, not only the municipality, but the people around in a discussion, in open discussions, uh, started to ask uh, uh, for the um, council chamber, for the space inside the municipality to organize events and uh, always open up uh, more to European uh, appointments uh, and keep on running. So their, um, uh, their um, advocacy did not stop after the Solidarity Purchase Group and after the CSA, they decided to build a Solidarity Economy District that it's a bottom-up network of sustainable enterprise that try to promote a different economy vision. And now even more, they made a social shop. So the, the economy, Solidarity District uh, open up uh, a solidarity shop that will uh, sell that, that is selling the product from uh, a dozen from 12 or more farms within uh, the Solidarity Economy District. I see that Domenico is finally in. I was introducing uh, your project. Thank you, Alice. I understand. I understand. Thank you very okay, much. Then... Thank you very much to I... everyone. I can interrupt the con the screen uh, sharing and you are on. Yes, thank you very much. Excuse me, uh, but uh, I leave uh, the 30 minutes um, that I was quiet because today is uh, the day of the CSA and we are making the uh, delivery. And so thank you, Alice, for the introduction. I am Dominic, I am a farmer. Uh, I I made uh, studies about permaculture, about the transition town, about transition training, and we are searching to 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 do something really, really new in 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 Italy, in this part of Italy between Treviso and uh, Venezia. But uh, I think that I have to speak about uh, the relationship with the, with, with the political um, with the political administration of our of our territory and so I speak about this and um, first things we began 
the relation uh, between uh, with uh, um, local uh, administration when we uh, founded um, the CSA. Uh, this year is uh, the sixth year and uh, at the beginning member of uh, the political party that administrate our town enter in, in the CSA. And so they are part of our community. And uh, from inside, together in the CSA, we exchange a lot, we speak about different things, and we uh, began to propose something to the administration. And uh, we began with the um, sign of the declaration of uh, climate emergency. And uh, we propose to sign this document and, um, and uh, all, the, uh, all the administration, the right way, but also the left way, and they sign this document. Then uh, we continue to work together. Not, not so much because it's not easy to plan and to work with uh, a little administration of uh, 15,000 people. And so our city is not very big, is uh, 15,000 uh, 15, citizens. And so we continue to exchange and um, we also uh, participated um, to different uh, events and proposition from uh, the local authorities. Uh, for example, uh, um, local authorities founded the um, district of um, Uh, Alice, se puoi aiutarmi, distretto del commercio. Trading. Trading. Trading or economical district. Okay. So, I don't think it, there is any specific word in English for this. Okay. And so we enter in this organi organization. And so we search to exchange by um, participation in order to um, empower, empower our abilities and uh, also the different uh, possibilities. And uh, one year ago, we proposed uh, to the local authorities to sign another document that is uh, the you um pact uh, milan pact for um local sustainable food system is uh, the document that uh, um came from uh, the expo of 2015 is uh, the document uh, is the main document for the local um local food system and we propose uh, to sign this document in order to give uh, um, a real um, a new step in order to reach our aim and so um, local uh, in a in a in a specific uh, events the local uh, authorities signs, sign this document, this important document. And all these documents uh, are proposed from uh, our CSA, CSA, and also for, is proposed for, from uh, um, Oltre Confin uh, District of uh, Social Economy. And um, it's interesting that uh, 
when we propose uh, these documents, all the political um, parties, they are together. And so left way and right way, they are um, interesting. Um, everyone is interesting about these themes. And so they are uh, agree. Okay. For example, um, they discuss a lot. We missed Domenico when he was discussing. Domenico? Okay, today this webinar is full of incidents. <laughs> Normally they are really quiet and everything goes perfect. And today <laughs> we have a few people who a lot of really dynamic webinars. <laughs> uh, well, maybe as he's on the road, however, I put in the chat the, the link to the old Confin, this is an economical district in, in, in the north of Italy. And I will look also for the no he disappeared well <laughs> today we have absolutely everything <laughs> uh, yes the 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 milan food policy pack thanks a lot and maybe we can just wait for a few seconds if he's coming back or not but i don't think uh, I don't know what he... I just have to, to say that the second link doesn't work. I mean, yes, it, it works, but there is a, a okay. no, no document. Oh, oops. Okay. And then uh, Domenico is also the referent, one of the, one of the coordinators of the Italian Economical uh, Solidarity Economy in Italy. And their experience is really interesting because they are one of the best examples that we have in Italy of uh, partnerships between CSA and administration. That's why we invited him because in this project is focused mainly in CSA and LSPA and they are one of the few experiences that we have that CSA are pushing to the local administrators. And as, uh, as we were, we are facing tonight uh, the, the, the first experience, Cooperativa Coraggio is in Rome, a big city, uh, the other one, the venue is um, working in all Belgium and with big cities as well. And what is really interesting from Domenico is the challenges that somebody has to, that the small experiences have to face to, to, to deal also with the, with the small, with the, with the small municipalities that sometimes it seems that it's easier, but as he said, they change quite a lot and it's really often and it's much more an experience that contact people person by person, the face-to-face the -face contact that instead of doing the, the things with the law. So from one side is, is easier and from the other side, you have to push uh, quite a lot more. I don't think that he's coming back, to be honest. I don't know if he will, if he will work. But first that we finish, okay, since we are waiting, I would like that, sure, I'm, I'm trying this since the very beginning of this evening. If, if we can have, a, we are really few people, if we can introduce yourself, where are you listening to us, where are you following? And if you have any small experiences of between CSA and, and local advocacy. So I pass the floor to Ariel, okay, if you want to introduce yourself, really short, and then you can pass the floor to the others. Hi, yes. Thanks. I am uh, an intern here in ICLE in Brussels. So I am just following this meeting to get infos because it's all super interesting. So it's just really to get to know all of these projects and report to the other working with me. And yeah, so we are working also on the Celsius project. Oh. And so, yeah, for me, it's super interesting to discover all these new realities. So that's it. Thanks, Ariel. So I pass the floor to Skander. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Sorry. No worries, Anna. That was perfect. Can you guys hear me? See? Si? Okay, perfect. Um, so hi, I'm Skander. I am originally from Tunisia. And um, I'm currently tuning in from London. 
but um, sustainable agriculture is something that I've always been interested in. And uh, in my home country, Tunisia, I'm part of the um, Association for Permaculture. Um, what else can I say? I'm really inspired about all the experiences that you guys shared with us. And uh, it's really inspiring, especially from the friends in Italy. Sorry, there's some background noise. Um, but uh, yeah, like I was saying, I spent some time in uh, Campania in Italy. And over there, you guys have some projects like uh, confiscated land, like government land that have been given to people so they can farm them and, uh, you know, have some associations. Like uh, I have some friends from an association that uh, has a land that was confiscated and they farm it. And it's also an association for people with autism. So that was a really inspiring experience. Yeah, I'm just happy to be here and uh, it's a pleasure to meet all of you. Thanks a lot, really thanks. And Katya, if you want yes. to, so really shortly, so we can finish just with this is more. Of wow. course, uh, can you hear me? I hope so. See? See? Great. Um, I am Katya from Berlin originally, but I live in Vienna, Austria. And I'm writing my master thesis about uh, CSA and especially about the differences and similarities between Italy and Germany. So this summer I will be like doing my research in Italy at the CSA Semi di Comunità in Rome <laughs> and um, as well in Florence at the, it's called Orto Bioattivo. Um, exactly. And then in Germany, I have two other CSA, which I'm like working with. And so I was just very interested in the topic and uh, Davide from Semi di Comunità gave me the link. And through Instagram, I saw this uh, like announcement for the for the webinar, let's say, and that's why I'm here. And uh, yes, from my side, um, thanks a lot for all this input. It was really interesting. Thanks, Akachi. I think that you are super welcome in Semi Comunità, the Alice CSA, and also the Orto Viativo. We really well known them. So good luck. There are lots of uh, experiences, people that are doing their thesis between CSA, the, the research on Italian CSA. So it will be great to, to, to help in the in the following ones. And some maybe someone sometime read one of them. So thanks a lot. And Tikiko, if you want to, uh, you already explain us about you a little bit. If you want to introduce, where are you listening to us from? Where are you from? Where are you are connected? No. Okay. It's okay like this. So thanks a lot. Really thanks for participating in this evening and for your time, for your passions with all these complications. We were, we were expecting more than, well, quite a few people. But sometimes happens that it's a nice evening today outside, at least in my in my place in the north of Italy. I'm ready. It's obvious that normal that people say, okay, this is registered. I will follow it later. But they have missed this super dynamic webinar with people who disappeared, other people that just jumps. So it's perfect. Okay. So thanks a lot for your passions and keep in touch with uh, with us and with uh, through our through our project and our webpage. Okay, thanks a lot to Francesca. Thanks, grazie mille, and to Cooperativa Coraggio and Antoine and Domenico. Thank you. Ciao. Thank ciao, you ciao a lot. Grazie mille. Ciao. Ciao. Thanks.